hello. Good day once again. You're welcome to the show, Poverty Fighters with Bernard. Um, today is a very good day, very wonderful day. Although um, if, if you of us uh, are not having the best of our days, but well, we hope that we get the best out of every single day. We're privileged to live a good life. Okay, that's the idea. Living great, living good, living excited, living. Um, uh, the promise and the grace of God um, every day fulfilling what God has put in us to fulfill. So, well, welcome to the show once again and I hope that you saw the last episode on travels and you're benefiting from it big time. Okay, so this week we're just going to um, and talk more on agribusiness. Um, a few days ago I was at um, the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship International Creativity Chapter and we had an agribusiness talk so um, I felt the need to share that talk with you also to also give you wisdom uh, on, and, 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 and understanding on what agri agri agriculture and agribusiness is doing to get more people out of poverty in our nation and across the world uh, today so um, yeah, we'll be taking a short break right now and then, and then the next uh, thing you'll be seeing will be the lecture and I hope that it educates you and gives you more wisdom and knowledge to be able to do more in agribusiness. There's more to agribusiness. Food is life. Food has a lifetime guarantee. So you and everyone around you can participate no matter what. Okay, so see you at the top as you enjoy the feeds for today. So watch out. The best is yet to come. So, uh, how many of us believe that this life Without food, this life no no go make sense totally. Without food, how many of you agree that? Nobody agree. If you agree without food, life doesn't make sense. Let me see. Wait, wait. Huh? So all of na after na talk food, na they deny food. What kind of behavior? Mommy, you say. At least he say alone. That means you must live with bread, though. But not live by only am. Uh -huh. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is why I'm here to categorically tell you that agriculture is what we all need. Now, have you all noticed that um, much, most recently they closed the borders uh, against importing rice and other food, right? Now, uh, it's actually had a very serious impact in our lives. In as much as we suffered for a while, but you can, if you if you agree with me right now, local rice is gradually turning to the foreign rice, right? It's the new foreign rice right now. Unlike before, when the foreign rice is really the foreign rice and the local rice is the local rice. Now local rice, we're beginning to accept our local rice, and we're beginning to eat it, and we're beginning to enjoy it. So I am here to categorically tell you with the follow with their both points of mind that um, local rice is better than foreign rice. No, that wasn't what I was going to say. <laughs> Actually, I'm here to tell you that uh, agriculture is a way of life. Sincerely, I don't know how many of you have registered with the Poverty Fighter Agricultural um, Arm, but it's something you should do. Get involved. Yes, agriculture is a way of life. So with this, I'd like us to bring up a professional in the agricultural business that's going to talk to us briefly about agricultural business and, we and all we need to know about agriculture. Permit me to welcome. Nikon, why are you working with pride? Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Mr. Bernard. A round of applause for Bernard. This man that is coming up is a professional agriculture businessman because he studied it in school and he is practicing it. Please help me. But, bros, you just go school, go study agriculture. Ah, agriculture. The farm, who the farm? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Bernard. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I, I was just sitting and, and I was asking myself, what else do I have to say? Diamond has said everything, right? Huh? You have to hear from me. You're welcome. I believe that we've all had a good time. We've eaten. How do we feel? Was any of us very hungry? Somebody told me today before the food came that, guy, I'm shaking. 
I'm just, the only thing I'm waiting for is for food to come so I will eat and be okay. And I believe he's okay right now. And if anybody was shaking before now, by now they'll be all right. So you see that food is very critical for our, for our bodies. Okay, like Mama said, man shall not live by bread alone. But you need bread to live. It's very important. So let's do a quick um, attention game. Let's all rise, please. Okay, just to ease a little bit of tension. Okay, it's just a very small attention. Everybody can see me, right? Good. All right. All you need to do is just pay attention to the instruction. Okay? Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay, good. So the instruction is this. Do what I say and not what I do. Do you get the instruction? Do what I say and not what I do. Touch your elbows. Let's look around. Let's look around, please. Look around. Somebody failing. <laughs> okay? It's just a quick attention game. It says, do what I say and not what I do. What did I say? Some people were touching their what? Some people were touching. Ah, show us. Ah, those ones even worse. Past people were touching their ear. <laughs> okay, please, let's have our seats. So today we are talking agribusiness, and then today I'm going to try to make this talk um, a lot more interactive. Um, and as I speak, we'll also make our contribution. So when we talk agribusiness, what do we think it is? Any ideas? Agribusiness. Anybody? Anybody with an idea of everywhere was locked down? Now, when everywhere was locked down, we had all the beautiful cars, all the fine shoes, the Gucci shoes. The, good, the Gucci suits, our very nice vintage ties. Well, could we go anywhere with it? At the first week of the lockdown, everybody was living large and feeling like um, the COVID was just going to come, go, and pass. But after a short period of time, what happened? Hunger would have killed more Nigerians before COVID-19 got to their houses. And so... As dreaded as that virus is, and everybody was wearing face masks, at that time, if you were even opportunity to go out, the next human being was a suspect because of COVID-19. But Nigerians were clamoring for the markets to be open, right? And it was open. So when we, some of us went to the market, um, when you got to the market, was there a one meter apart spacing when you wanted to buy food? No. All the protocols, everything that was a mechanism to prevent the spread of COVID-19 went out the door. Because of what? People wanted to buy food because it was critical for them. And so food is very, very critical to human existence. And so since I was born till date, I've been eating food every day. Has there anybody that has not been eating food every day? Even if you are fasting for 21 days, on the 22nd day, wouldn't you eat food? In short, we fast and we do our fasting from 12 to 6. And by after 6, we are what to eat food, right? And food is not just rice and beans and, and what we see. The water you're taking is food. The drinks you take is food. It had to take somebody somewhere to produce the raw materials for that to be made. And so, so many people will see food as just um, the rice and the cassava that you eat on your table. What about the other processed food? Somebody has to stay there and do it. So if there's no raw material, how would you have what you like? Some of us like Coca-Cola. There's a raw material to that effect. If one farmer is in there to produce that raw material, how would you drink Coke? It's not possible. So I would like to read us something that the minister, former Minister of Agriculture said who is now the current president of the African Development Bank. And he was asked, what's the future of, African, of Africans in Africa? And this is what he has to say. And he says, the future millionaires and billionaires of Africa will not be coming from oil and gas. They will be coming from the agricultural sector. Okay? And he says, I want African countries to begin to look at agriculture as a business and not just a way of life. 
I'd like to dwell on that point a little bit. When we say agriculture as a business and not just a way of life, agriculture as a way of life has always been this. Um, a lot of us that grew up in the villages always had a time where our parents would wake us up so early and would trek very long distance to the farm. And then what did they produce? What they could eat and survive till the next planting season, correct? And that's a way of life. You were able to plant and produce food that could sustain yourself and your family and maybe be generous and give some other people around the community, right? Now, agriculture has grown beyond that way of life. Where you can be in Nigeria, plant the food, and that food will travel out of Nigeria before you ever get a visa to travel out of this country. Food is not just restricted to you and your family. It is global. And today, the world population is growing faster than normal. By the projected growth rate is 50 billion by the year 2025. Our growth rate is growing faster than our food production rate. And in Asia and Africa, and Africa correct, the average age of the farmers producing what we eat correct currently, which has not been able to meet world demands, is 60 years old. So the question is, in the next 10 years, I think the next war that will happen will be a food war, not a territorial war. will be a food war. And so it, it comes to mind to ask, what do we do? What steps do we take to ensure that we're able to meet these demands? The population is growing, but the amount of people in, the, in that sector isn't growing to meet up that population. Now, in Nigeria alone, every day we give birth to 6,000 babies, added to our current population, which is over 2 million, 200 million, sorry. The big question is, if we give birth to kids as high as 6,000 babies every day, Where's the food to feed them? Where are the silos that this food have been kept? We have large, vast, arable land, but what do we do with them? They lie fallow. A lot of us see agriculture as a dirty man's business. But that's not what it is. If you are a farmer today, and you know what you're doing, and you have the right management skills, and you have the right technical skills, you can have a farm and have a duplex as your office, the same way banks have big duplexes as their offices, the same way the NMPC has a very big tower. Agriculture has a capacity to give you that. But the question is, do you know how to go about it? That's the big question. I met somebody that, had, that, that wanted to do an integrated farm, and the integration was fish pond and a greenhouse. Very great investment. And he had invested money and already completed the fish pond and wanted to start. And then we're in the conversation, and I, I was just like, so hope you know that when you start your fish pond, you can't wake up in the morning and rub and have your bath or rub cream or spray, or spray body spray on your hands or anywhere and go feed your fish or, worst of all, put your hands inside the water. And I was like, ah, what would happen? I said, yes, now. All your investment will die immediately. Now, you can imagine somebody that had the idea of doing such a very unique investment does not have access to that very minute information. Not just minute. It's small, but it is major. Because if you had invested $7 million or $10 million there, just one act of not having simple basic knowledge would have wiped it out. Tomorrow, he will come and say, I Greek is not lucrative, Right? We had somebody that came and said he did a plantain plantation, and w water just came and flooded everything. And he was just complaining and saying, ah, Greek, I've tried all my best. I've done this. I've done it. I never succeeded. I'm like, at the time you were going to check the site for your plantain plantation, which expert did you take there? He couldn't answer me. Because an expert would have seen the topography of the land and told him that, hey, it is possible that this place can get flooded. So what mitigation plans do you have? 
So he just did, did his plantain. He said he gave it out to people. The wise man did the plantation, now rented places for people to do agriculture, which means he has cut cost on the cost of weeding that farm. Because if he has people farming inside within the spaces on the plantation, it saves him that cost. Wise thinking. But what happened? One flood came. Everything gone. So it is very key that technical knowledge is very, very important for you to succeed in agribusiness. Now, the main aim is to push our minds to, uh, to know that agribusiness is the way to go. Nigeria is one over 200 million. If you make one naira from what just a subset of one million eat every day, how much do you make? Our eyes are going up. How much do you make? If you make just one naira from what one million people eat every day, how much do you make? Is there any job on earth today that can pay you one million naira every day? But people wake up every single day and eat food. We have eaten here today. Do we know where the food came from? Do we? We might say we know the caterer, but do we, know, do we actually know where the food came from? Do you know the farmer that produced the rice you ate today? Have you met him before? Do you have his phone number? But he has made money because you have eaten today. Same way every other farmer has made money across board in Nigeria. Not just Nigeria, in Africa. Not just Africa, across the world. Agriculture is the only thing that has a lifetime guarantee. It is sure, it is a guarantee that if you put two seeds on the ground here, after three months, you will come here and invest more than 10 cobs if you do the right management practices. If you invest your money in Forex, today the dollar is what? Five something. Tomorrow it might drop to what? Four something. Next tomorrow it might go to 900. But if you follow every principle of agriculture and you put seeds on the ground and you follow all the principles, the soil test, the soil management, the management principle of planting that corn, it will give you results in three months. You can do the same thing in Abuja, in Lagos, in Port Harcourt, in Zamfara. It is guaranteed. So what better place to invest your time, your resources, your effort in agriculture? And agriculture has gone beyond just farming with who and cutlasses. I believe that's what scares people. The fact that when they talk about agriculture, all they hear is who and cutlass. No. There are smart ways to do agriculture today. People grow yams instead of doing heaps. They grow yams in sacks. There's something called aeroponics. They grow agriculture in the air. Hydroponics, they, grow, they do farming in water. Okay? So there's a lot of development going on in agriculture. The question is, are we ready to take advantage? If feeding 1 million people in Nigeria alone, of course, which we know that more than 1 billion people would eat. Whether you like rice or it's only beans you like. There are two things, major. There's Coca-Cola and there's Pepsi, right? Now, if you like Coca-Cola, anytime you go buy a drink, you must want to look for Coca-Cola first, right? But when you don't find Coca-Cola, what's the substitute you would take? So the day you take Pepsi, you have given money to Pepsi. We are constantly giving money to Pepsi. So, if Pepsi just decides to capture half of the market that Coca-Cola has, are they making money? Because people must eat every day. So, whether you like Egusi or not, there's somebody outside Nigeria that likes Egusi that would want the farmer in Nigeria to farm Egusi and send to him wherever he is. Would that farmer make money? So anybody that's coming in Agusi and has not sent Agusi outside Nigeria, what is he lacking? Information. Knowledge. So we try to tell people that seek good knowledge in agribusiness. Because it is the future. It is the future. It is the one thing that has a lifetime guarantee. I've been in it. I'm in it actively. So I'm always excited when I get a chance to talk to people about agriculture and agribusiness. So not everybody has to go to the field and hold, dig the soil. You can invest in logistics. 
just moving product from one location to another. And you're making money. And you're in agribusiness. You can invest in storage. Just your big compound that has a very big space. You just build a warehouse there and tell people, if you want to store product, I have stuff for you. People are looking for storage. I am looking for storage to store agri agricultural products. And people will pay you to store their products there because you have a storage facility. There's somewhere in Bauchi where they have over 30,000 30, 30, metric tons silos, and it's underground. It's underground, storing food. So the day that food gets scarce in Nigeria, they will determine the price of food. Scarcity will bring about an increase in that price. For me, most of the time, I don't like to speak too much on the importance and the relevance of agriculture. We all know what the relevance is. And I'd like to tell you a short story about myself before I tell you the opportunities in agriculture and agribusiness. When I was about going to school to study the agriculture, I studied agricultural economics from Landmark University in Moiron. And at the time I wrote um, the exams, I had two admissions. I had one in Futmina and had the admission in Landmark University. And then I think the one in Futmina was survey, quantity survey, and I had agricultural economics. And my dad was, was wondering, which one do, where do I go? And while we were growing up in secondary school, and they will ask, what will be, what do you want your career and ambition to be? You hardly any, see anybody that runs towards farming. Everybody, I was an engineer until I entered university. No, honestly, I was an engineer until I finally entered university. And at the time, I was contemplating, hi, how would they say I'm doing agriculture? I do. Like the question that uh, the MC was asking me. MC. Can you crack joke from now till tomorrow, and after the joke, food appears on your table? Depends. I would like to see you watch that magic. Now, no mathematician can write any form of formula, and after writing that formula, and it goes to bed and wakes up, and that formula converts to food. No doctor can prescribe any drug and tell you that be taking this drug for the next 100 years, you will not be hungry. It's not possible. No liar can quote any law and say from anywhere that don't eat food, you will survive. All of this person. So as I was saying, when I went to school, all the engineering students would look at you and say, this agri student, the way they used to call it, eh? oh, stigmatization. They would say, this agri student, what are you looking for here? So it was more like, ah, this one they call us agri. That, my school did one very bad thing, eh? Each college had a color of um, um, tag. So the engineering students were red, the business and social sciences were blue, and agri was the typical green. So you can all hide. It shines bright. The, the other people that had red, you might not even see them. Even in the dark, you will see the green. And so we're mandated to always put that on. So you can't even hide your identity. But it was still, we got to 300 level. I now knew the importance of what I was studying. And no matter who you guys are, at the end of the day, you end up in the cafeteria to eat. I'm like, in my school back then, you can't eat one square meal without spending over up to 1,500 naira. But you're putting money in somebody's pocket and you're eating food. So all the uh, Greek students that you're telling me, don't worry, I'm building myself up to come and collect this same money that you're spending. And today is a wonderful one. I'm so excited to talk about agribusiness and agriculture. It excites me so much because at the end of the day, you come back to me. So all your mathematics that you studied and all the law that you studied during COVID-19 lockdown, come back to me. So if I choose to sell my product to you, fine. If I say no, you that was calling me a Greek, I don't want to give you. So who holds the power at the end of the day? We are the first profession that God created. God created the garden and said, my guy, Alpha, manage them. Okay, all the animals. And the three basic things of our lives, entirely cost across agriculture. What are the three basic things for human life? Food, clothing, and shelter. Is there anyone you can do without agriculture? Please clap for me, brother. 
There is none. There is none you can do without agriculture. There is none. Agriculture has the capacity to employ more Nigerians than any other sector. If you go to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, it has more parastatal than any other ministry. Agriculture has the capacity to apply, employ over three, all the 300 million employment that they are calling. It's not an NPC that can provide it. It's agri. It's food production that can provide it. But what's the challenge? They've not created the enabling environment to ensure that youth can do it. And now agri is not just for farmers. Agri is for everybody. There's something called agricultural engineering. So even as much as you're an engineer, you can be an engineer in agriculture. In agriculture, there's some, something called farmhouses. Who built them? Not the, not the farmer. The engineers construct the houses, the pens for the, for the poultry bed, the pen for the piggery, the, whatever pen you want to co construct. It has to be an engineer that will construct it. So there's an opportunity for every sector. The agricultural farms need lawyers to document their product when they're going out. So if somebody's trying to sue your product for lack of quality, there's a lawyer that will stand for you. The agribusiness needs ICT. Today you have um, drones doing all the fumigation. You have, you have technology where satellite imagery can tell you where to put fertilizer and where not to waste your money and put fertilizer. The economics of agriculture is fast becoming low so that we can get more productivity. And we call that smart agriculture. So if you used to get 10 tons of product in, a, in an acre, smart agriculture can give you 20 tons just by knowing what to do. So it cuts across all levels. No matter what you are doing or what you think you do, you are relevant to food production. The IT guys are relevant. The engineers are relevant. The lawyers are relevant. Any other profession? The doctors are relevant. Because you know why they are relevant? Mushroom is a very key agricultural product in medicine and pharmacy. Mushroom. When last did any of us eat mushroom? We don't eat mushrooms. Very healthy product. Very healthy product. So let me just quickly go through the opportunities we have in agriculture. Like I said, the demand for food will continue to soar. So this is just to encourage us to know that we need to begin to look towards agriculture. First, is because the demand for food will soar in proportion to the population growth that we have. Okay? We're growing at a fast rate at a much more increasing rate that we can even imagine. And the food production ratios are not increasing in that line. So we need an 80% increase in what we're currently producing to be able to feed the world as it is currently today. So that's one guarantee. That because the population is increasing, food productions need to increase. And who would do that, you and I, if we start looking at investing in agriculture? OK? So Africa can feed itself. Okay, in the rural village of Kura, in Kano, farmers lose half of their produce due to post-harvest losses. Now, if we invest in storage, we invest in logistics, we invest in transportation, we invest in preservation, would that loss still happen? And all of this investment will be paid for. Farmers, just, they don't just access resources and not pay for it. It has to be paid for because it's called what? Value chain. Okay? You see, Africa has the capacity to feed the world. Africa is home to about 65, 60 to 65% of uncultivated arable land, 10% of renewable freshwater resources, and it has registered 160% increase in agricultural field production, food production. In fact, the Democratic Republic of Congo alone can feed 2 billion people, according to estimates. Just one country in Africa. You see, just like China is the, um, dominating the world of manufacturing. So is Africa dominating the world of food production. You see, agriculture is more about technology than landmass. So it's no longer how many hectares of land you have. Is what level of smart agriculture do you know? So with our landmass in, in Nigeria, if we can adopt technologies to produce and increase our production rate, we'll do twice the number of what we're doing now. 
because it's not just about landmarks. I think in, in the Netherlands, Netherlands, Rwanda is twice as big as Netherlands. But Netherlands' import and export ratio is way, way higher. They, made, they did, uh, as of two years ago, they did 92 billion on export. How? They are using smart agricultural technologies to produce food. There in Netherlands, in, across the world, you have um, a 10 tons return on potato from one acre. In Netherlands, they have 20 tons from that same one acre. So what are they adopting? Technology. So we need to look at, at that. Africa is yet to experience the Green Revolution. At the time, Green Revolution was going across the world where people were already getting synthetic chemicals and ways to improve agriculture was when Nigeria decided to discover oil. So we left everything behind. And now, I'm glad that currently now we're trying to retrace our steps back to what it is that we've been doing. It's been a great ride. We've, we're seeing a lot of changes and development, although too many hitches going on. But by the grace of God, we'll get there. Okay? So, nine countries make up 60% of the total agricultural potential. And, and more than half of that in Africa, these three countries has. Ethiopia, Nigeria, and Tanzania has more than half of the arable land in Africa entirely. So, let's speak as Nigerians. We have the capacity to feed ourselves and the world. What are we doing? And agriculture does not just stop you from doing what you're doing. Even if you can't do it actively, you can invest in it. You have the capacity to invest in agriculture, and because it has a lifetime guarantee, you'll get the best of what you have done. Okay, so, as I wind up, I'll just like to say this to encourage the women in, in the building today. So women are increasingly taking up the challenge in agriculture. Um, almost 50% of what we consume um, in Africa are produced by women. So they, they categorize a very large labor force in agriculture. They are the backbone of agriculture. Please, all the women here should please give a round of applause for themselves. So there's no better thing to say than to say, let's think agriculture. Let's invest in agriculture. Let's participate in the food production index of Nigeria because soon we'll be praying that hey, if I had known the one trillion dollars sector called agriculture is going to grow faster than we can imagine. So no better time than now to plow into the system and plug yourself in to begin to reap the benefits of agribusiness. So I'd like to say thank you and hope that more of us will continue to do agribusiness and promote agricultural investment. Thank you and God bless you.